your man, Louis T. Welcome to this Louis T. Network exclusive, ranking the eight head coaching vacancies and the four GM openings. Now let's talk about these eight job openings. And here's what I assess. Here's what I look at, right? When I'm thinking about a job opening, um, if I'm a GM, I'm taking into consideration everything from the roster, the cap space, um, the draft capital, ownership, how stable is the franchise? These are all things that matter to me. As a head coach, cap space doesn't matter as much. Draft capital, eh, it depends on what the situation is. That, that may come into play. But really, do you have a quarterback? And what's the roster look like? And how do I fit into the equation, right? How stable is the ownership group? How stable is the owner? How stable is the, the franchise as, as a whole? Because I don't want to be Frank Wright taking a job, thinking it's a five-year deal, moving my family to that area only to be fired 11 games in. I don't want to do that, right? So clearly these are things that would matter to me as a head coach. So let's go through where each of these teams rank in my estimation, some of this is um, facts, like hard data, numbers, and then some of it is opinionated. It's my opinion, right? So some of it is subjective and some of it is factual. So uh, let's start with cap space. That's something that isn't subjective. This is factual. These are hard numbers, right? So um, cap space-wise, you want to be in a healthy spot if you're trying to att attract a GM. Um, it, 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 it can be a deterrent. It doesn't have to be, but it can be a deterrent when trying to lure a GM there. I want to be able to come in and have flexibility. I don't want to come in and have to dig myself out of a hole immediately. But again, if you're going to turn the roster over anyway, that's probably going to help you get yourself where you need to be from a, a cap situation. Um, it's not impossible. And again, if you're going to find someone that's willing to do it, but it still makes it a lot harder to attract the type of talent that you probably are looking for if you are going after a top tier um, GM candidate. That said, cap space, the, the Washington Commanders rank first in cap space among these eight teams with $86 million of cap space available as of today. Uh, the Commanders have nine total draft picks. They have the number two overall pick in the draft, and they have five picks in the top 100. And if you extend it to the uh, beginning of the fourth round, day three, they have six picks in the top 103. So um, they've got a lot of draft capital. They've got early draft capital. They've got a ton of cap space, the most in the NFL. Again, we'll get to all of that as we continue to go through this Um this exercise. So now we get to what I think is the most important question. If you are a prospective GM or head coach, I think these are the, this is the category that if you're a co head coach, this is the one you're looking at the most. Because if you don't have this, then I better have resources to get this or I'm not going to be successful. Right. And it's quarterback. Do you have a quarterback? Commanders don't have a quarterback. And then my last category that I took into consideration when making um, up my list of these openings and where they rank, organizational stability slash owner, right? So how stable is your organization and how is your owner perceived around league circles? Do you have good ownership trustworthy ownership, um, patient ownership, et cetera, et cetera. Is the owner going to allow you to make the decisions, the moves that you want to make without meddling? These are the types of things you have to ask yourself if you're a potential GM or even a head coach. Because if you have a very meddlesome head coach or, or owner, he's going to not only meddle in the affairs of the general manager, but it's going to trickle down to you and personnel decisions and what you can and can't do on the field, who's playing, who's not playing, those types of things. You never want to be in that situation. So that's something that I would take into consideration uh, when I'm assessing these openings. So I, I rated these jobs in, in this particular category, um, owner or organizational stability slash owner. 
on a scale of one to five, five being the highest stability, you're as functional and stable as it gets in the NFL to one, which is as dysfunctional as it gets. And it, you would like to stay as far away from that job, if at all possible. Uh, commanders, I put them at a 3.5. Um, this would have been a one. This might have been a negative one this time last year. But with new ownership coming in, the, the, the consensus around the league is that Washington is in good hands. Um, Josh Harris has a track record in other sports of being a supportive owner, one that allows he, he hires people, puts them in, in positions of power, and then allows them to do their job. And that's what we expect him to do here. And so um, I think there's a positive vibe around the league about what Washington can become under the ownership and leadership of Josh Harris, Magic Johnson, Mitchell Rails, and the like. So um, I think they're at three and a half. They still got more goodwill to build up, but uh, they're off to a great start. And uh, look, you can't get any worse than what it was before, right? <laughs> so, and then number one, I, and you can call me biased if you want, but trust me, if I didn't think we were worthy of this, I would not have put us at one. Uh, it's Washington. It's the commanders, okay? Um, I don't have to explain to you why this is the best job overall in the league this season as ter in terms of an opening for both GM and head coach, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> First of all, the cap space is ridiculous. First in the league, most cap space of any team, $86 million. So there's that. They have nine total draft picks, the most of any of these teams on this list. They've got five in the top 100, the most of any team in this list. And they've got the number two overall pick, the highest of any team on this list. So while they don't have a quarterback, they're going to be in a position to get one this offseason in the draft. So you can kind of take that off the list. And even furthermore, it's almost better to come into a situation, unless you're getting Justin Herbert, that, that changes things. But unless you're getting a quarterback like Herbert, and that's rare, right? That you're going to have a situation open up with a quarterback like a Justin Herbert. Normally, you marry that quarterback with a coach that stays there for 12 years, the full duration of his career. So when you think about a guy like Drew Brees, he was with Sean Payton. You think about, uh, about a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, he was with um, Mike Tomlin, right? Josh Allen hasn't had another coach other than Sean McDermott. Generally, when you get talents like that, openings don't happen because that quarterback is so good, you're going to continue to win, and that coach is going to continue to be there. Uh, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, you get where I'm going with this, right? Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy, until we got to the bitter end of that situation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, at the end of the day, um, you don't see quarterbacks come available like Herbert. But normally, when you're going after a job, you're going to inherit a guy like Geno Smith. That's not terrible, but you can do a lot better. You're going to inherit a quarterback situation like the Raiders. Aiden O'Connell can't be your starting quarterback going into training camp. You're going to inherit, inherit a job like the Falcons where you go, I got to do something. I can't go into next season with Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke as my two options. I've got to do something. That's usually what you're inheriting. Or you're coming into a situation with a quarterback like, say, Kirk Cousins. That's cool. But am I winning the Super Bowl with him? I don't know. Or Derek Carr or something like that. This is a situation where you get to pick. You get to handpick your quarterback at number two overall. And if the Bears are open for business, you could get as high as number one. If that is something that you're interested in doing. You have the draft capital to do it. You've got the means to make it happen. You've got the cap space to go and turn this roster over and be competitive right away. Um, You've got talent on this football team now. They need some work. I'm not going to sit here and act as if this is the best roster of, of this group of teams because it's not. But you've got some talented football players, whether you're talking about Brian Robinson Jr. at the running back position, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson at the receiver position. You've got uh, Sam Cosme as one of the, to me, one of the better right guards in all of football, right? So you, you've got a little bit of a nucleus there that you can build around. You're going to need some work on that offensive line, but it might not be as bad as we think. You know, depending on if some of the other pieces come to fruition, they got some young players that we just don't know what they are on the offensive line. We'll see what happens. You're going to need to do some work regardless on that offensive line. Tight end, you're going to need to get you a, a TE one. You don't have one currently on this roster. You're going to need to go get one of those, right? But if you get one of those, everything else could fall into place with Amani Rogers coming back from injury next year and John Bates already looking like a legitimate TE3. So 
Um, offense isn't that far away. You get the right guy in there. There's enough talent that you can turn that thing around quickly. Defensively is where work needs to be done. And that's where those draft picks, that's where that cap space is all going to really come into play because they've got, you need at least three defensive ends this off season, right? You need a, a overhaul probably of the linebacker position and you need at least one, maybe two corners this off season. And then you, you see what happens with the safety position and how things shake out with free agency. But um, I said all of that to say this with the cap space available, with the draft capital available, with the number two overall pick in your back pocket and a roster that isn't terrible, that's fully capable of turning it around rather quickly if the right buttons are pushed this offseason. To me, this and an ownership group, let me not forget this, that has come in here, changed the way that people feel about this organization, and has already displayed a track record of hiring people and allowing them to do their jobs. It's a really good situation to be in if you're the commanders. And just understand this. And I'm going to repeat this later on tonight when I'm live talking about um, th these two potential candidates that Washington are interviewing for the GM job. Understand this. Adam Peters, one of the most sought after GM candidates in the league the last three years, turned down opportunities with the Titans and the Cardinals last year, um, was in the finals for the Giants job. Don't know if he had that offer to him or if he turned it down or not. I think he wasn't offered that job, but he was in the he was in the final stages there with the Giants two years ago, turned down the Titans job, turned down the Cardinals job. Both of those were offered to him and went back to San Francisco to be the assistant GM there. Right. Ian Cunningham. Right. Same thing. Had opportunities to go elsewhere, was offered the Cardinals GM job last year, was offered the Titans, Titans GM job last year, turned both of them down to go back to Chicago. These are guys that can be selective. Why? They're among the hottest GM candidates in the league and both want the Washington job. They are the last two finalists for the position. It tells you just how far Washington has come in one calendar year. This time last year, we couldn't have dreamt of having one of those two guys wanting our job. Our cap situation isn't what it was now. The draft situation isn't what it is now. And our ownership and, uh, and organizational stability wasn't what it is now. Fast forward a year, and now two of the best, brightest, and young GM candidates in the league are vying for the Washington GM job. It's the best GM job opening, and I think it's the best head coaching opening as well because of all of the things that I've mentioned, all of the assets that are at the disposal of the next head coach. If, for instance, if you're Bobby Slowick or Ben Johnson and you have a preference at the quarterback position in this year's draft class, you can go get that guy. Sands for maybe Caleb Williams if the Bears decide that's who they want at number one. They say you really like Drake May. Well, you can get that guy. You can mold him. You can have him grow in your offense. You don't have to inherit Baker Mayfield, you don't have to inherit Derek Carr. You don't have to inherit, you know, a bad quarterback situation with no way out. You don't have to inherit somebody with bad habits already. You can come in, get your guy, and mold him in your offense. Isn't that something that you would want to do? I think that's why um, this is a really good job. So um, now I'm going to take the liberty to take it a step further and I'm going to give you who I think. This is not who I think is going to end up there. I'm telling you who I think is the best fit for these jobs, okay? Again, keep in mind, understand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you this is who I think the franchise is going to hire. This is who I think is the best hire for the job, okay? Um, and then finally for Washington, um, y'all know what it is. It's Ben Johnson, man. Um, Ben Johnson, to me, is the perfect coach for Washington because of all the things that I've already mentioned about Ben Johnson with the Falcons. Now, he doesn't have a tight end here, but he can get himself one this year with draft. There'll be plenty of options, I'm hoping, available, right? Um, 
and and I, this is a talented tight end group that that's more likely than not going to be available this year in the draft. So I'm not really too concerned about Washington finding themselves a tight end in the second or the third round. We got two second round picks very early, and you have um, a third round, a couple of third rounders, excuse me. And so I think with one of those four picks, you can get yourself a quality starting NFL tight end um, that will really work in his scheme. Um, we know the receivers are there. He could do some work with Terry McLaurin because I think Terry McLaurin is a faster version of Amon Ross St. Brown. So I think Terry would absolutely eat mm, 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 in his system. Jahan Dotson wouldn't look like some secondary scrub in his offense because they'd actually use him. And Ben Johnson would actually utilize him and get the football to him. Right. Um, and, and then I think Brian Robinson Jr. would be allowed to be Brian Robinson Jr. They would actually give him the football, give him opportunities to do the things that he's done very effectively in his first two years, just hasn't had enough opportunities. I think you add a speed back and I see Washington doing that anyway. And you got everything that, and of course, you got to fix the offensive line. That's something he's been afforded that is better in Atlanta right now than it is in Washington. But you fix the offensive line, which is something he was afforded in Detroit. And you got the makings of a, a big time offense. And then, you know, as I mentioned, you, he's going to have to come in here, hire himself a good defensive coordinator. I'm assuming he'll bring somebody from Detroit with him if he doesn't have a name in mind around the league elsewhere. Um, and, and you just try to whip this defense into shape. But offensively, um, to me, Washington hasn't scored, hasn't averaged over 20 points in a season in four years, five years. OK, we haven't averaged over 20 points offensively since 2018. Didn't in 19, didn't in 20, didn't in 21 or well, a lot. I think we did in 2021. We didn't in 22 or 23. We didn't in 20 or 19. So four out of the last five years, we haven't averaged over 20 points a game. Who you beating doing that shit? Like, I know the defense was historically bad for, for Washington this year. It was historically bad. I'm aware. And a lot of work. And that's why they're talking to a lot of defensive guys right now. But it, to win in this league, you need offense. You need to score points. How many, how many good teams with elite defenses have we seen win six, seven games? Because you can't win like that in the NFL anymore. You got to score points, man. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of having to try to make 17, 20, or, or 23 points work. I'm sick of that. I'm over that. I'm trying to score 27. I'm trying to score 30. I think we can do that if you get a guy like Ben Johnson. I think he's a perfect fit for Washington. But until that happens, uh, we'll see. But they, they seem to be smitten by a lot of defensive dudes, so we'll see what they decide to do. But I think he's the best fit for the Washington Commanders. So. Mm -hmm.